Okay, good morning everyone. Um, I'm going to show you today some Nintendo DS games uh, that I've collected over the years and talk about why I like the DS and why I think it's probably a good time now if you're a collector to start collecting it, start looking at it. Uh, so I think most of you have already at least seen or heard of it, but the Nintendo DS was their follow-up for the Game Boy Advance and uh, DS, of course, means dual screen because it had two screens. So we had your regular little screen at the top and then there was also a touch screen at the bottom. Uh, this is a what they call a resistive touch screen, so it goes entirely off pressure. So uh, modern phones and things use capacitive touch screens as actually the capacitance of your skin. And so you can do multi-touch zooming, things like this. This one is very simple. It's just wherever something is hitting it, it's uh, picking that up as a resistance value this way and this way and it can only do one point of contact at a time uh, but it is nice in some ways because you can use the little included stylus pen there and some games which I'm going to bring out will actually have custom styluses and things like that so um, yeah I think that uh, it was sort of sold almost uh, as a multi-purpose device it does include things like there's a, a chat application where if somebody else has a DS that they can connect via Wi-Fi with you and you can chat, you know, you could do a lot of Wi-Fi things with it. Um, it would actually connect to uh, a remote server for online play of some games, but I think that the servers have been turned off. So there's probably a hack or something now, but I don't really know, but some way that maybe you could play Metroid against people um, I only really did that about three times. <laughs> it was not not convenient to do online play 20 years ago. So, um, yeah, but that was some of the cool stuff that you could do with it. Uh, another nice thing is that it had a Game Boy Advance cartridge port in it. So you could have your Game Boy Advance cartridges in through the bottom there. And then in the top, you had your cartridge port for the new smaller cartridges and so you can see there's a Zelda one and one thing I do like about it is just how little these cartridges are that you know you could just have so many games you know you can really have your whole game collection just in a tiny little pocket you know and then you just go oh yeah I've got this I've got this I've got this you know just keep popping them out one after the other and <clears throat> I think they had a really good variety of games, you know, because there was the touch screen that it meant that you could do things like, um, you know, there were writing games, there was the brain training was really big, or Nintendogs was another really popular one where you could, you know, essentially pat the dog through the touch screen. <laughs> and, you know, people did get very into this. My wife had a whole, like, Nintendogs menagerie going, you know, and... Um, it, it would do this thing though where it used the real-time clock in the system so if you left it for a week and came back your dogs would all be dirty and it got to the point where you know she hadn't played the dog game for about three months and she was afraid to switch it on in case the dog had died <laughs> or something. <laughs> but, um, skeletons everywhere. Yeah well I, I think what would happen is that the dogs would, would run away and so you know they would, they would have disappeared if you weren't looking after them but there was another one um, I'm not sure if I've got the cartridge here but Animal Crossing where you, you have a little house and I went back into that after several years away from it and my house was full of bugs. <laughs> so, you know, and the, and the whole town was full of cobwebs and things. You know, it, it's horrible to think that all these little people have been... Little turn yeah, sorry, Funny bells, enough, it? <laughs> with Nintendogs, if you don't turn it on for a while, the dogs don't run away. They're still there. Yeah. Because I watched a video where someone didn't power on their Nintendogs cartridge for like 10 years. Yeah. And the first thing he did was donate one of the dogs. Oh, okay. <laughs> He didn't, didn't want to face it. <laughs> <laughs> no, once he did, like, oh, come on. Yeah. Um, I'll see if I... Unfortunately, the cartridge port on this one's a little bit dodgy, oh, so I might have to turn it on and off a few times. I can imagine some poor kid with a hole in his pocket and he's left a sprinkle of those all over the playground. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if you, if you lose one, you'll probably never find it again, so that could be... And so, did at least take the R4 cards as well? Yeah. I think that the all the R4 things started off with the DS. Yeah. Yeah, so R4 this is are um, great. Saves a lot of money. <laughs> and they have action replay built in. Yeah, so this is Rhythm Heaven. This is uh, one thing that I kind of liked about it was they did a lot of, again, like unusual games. And so this was... Ooh, flick this up here. 
crossing with all the, all the, with all the turnips, growing turnips and having to deal with a vicious landlord. <laughs> the best one is in Japan, McDonald's created a training video on the DS. <laughs> and it's one of the most rarest expensive games you can find. Yeah. No, there were some really obscure ones. Yeah. Yeah, and so it's things like, you know, where... And the, I think the ad for this game was uh, the singer Beyonce playing it. So, yeah, there were a lot of celebrity endorsements, things like that. I think that now you even have um, Emma from the Wiggles playing the Switch and that sort of yeah. stuff. So they're, they're very big on trying to appeal to, I guess, like non-hardcore gamers or casual gamers, you know. So mm -hmm. trying to get a lot of people who, who weren't really into to games at the time. And so, yeah, this is the sort of stuff that they had. And another nice feature is if you close it, then you can see that the little standby light is still flashing, and then as soon as you open it, you're back in your game. You know? So that was really good, because if you're playing it on the bus or something, you got to get off the bus, you just close it, and then next time you can play it. And the standby life I found was really long on these. You know, you could actually leave it all day just in this mode, and then when you get home, it would still be sitting there just flashing away. Or well, the boss walks past your desk. Well, yeah, you know, you'd just be able to close it up like that. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so... Is that a custom skin you put on it? Or is that yeah, this, this was a thing, you know, back um, in the 2000s, was that they had these vinyl wraps that you yeah. could put on devices, you know, and there was a place uh, in Chinatown, you know, where I went in and just picked out from a catalogue and the guy just stuck the vinyl on, had a hairdryer to kind of get all the bubbles out, you know, and I uh, thought that was kind of fun. Yeah, even the stylus has a little bit of vinyl on it because, you know, it was part of it. So, yeah. But, um... Yeah, so as well as kind of collecting all these teeny little cartridges, then they had a few games which had unusual sort of peripherals and things. So this is kind of the most basic one. So this is a Japanese game. This was actually a friend of mine, I think, got this on a trip to Japan and uh, I bought it off him for like 20 bucks uh, when he was moving. And this is a Taiko drum simulator. So you've got your little game cartridge and then to play it, you get these lovely little just I'll see if I can put them on the, the camera here these happy little fellows here Very and so you get these two little <laughs> drumsticks and then as you play you actually Sorry. get them and then you tap them one at a time on the screen there so um sorry have I got you guys upside down there there we go yeah so you'd be you know tapping them away there playing the drums and so I thought that was pretty cool you know that you actually have special drumsticks and things like that so that was kind of nice you know I, I don't usually keep most of the games in the case just because again I like to actually have them all just there uh, another fun one was Elite Beat Agents and so this is a, another rhythm tapping type game what was sort of cool about this is that you got the game cartridge and then you also had a second one which is the rumble pack and so this goes in via the um, GBA port at the bottom there okay let's see if uh, no, it doesn't always recognize that the cartridge is in there this is a problem just with my DS unfortunately yeah but as you play if you're hitting in the right rhythm then the whole thing is going to kind of vibrate so you know it would, uh, and I Actually think there are a few vibrate. other yeah, so this is a vibration pack, nice. you know, with a little phone buzzer type thing in Does it. Has it got a battery in it? No. So oh, it's nice. powered from the cartridge port, yeah. Oh. That's pretty cool. <coughs> yeah, unfortunately my DS is not that uh, reliable. I should have should have brought my wife's one as a backup. No, I don't think it likes this game. Um, yeah, but there are a few other games that also supported the Rumble Pack. So if you were playing, you know, like just in a conventional kind of game, then whenever it uh, you know, would do something that would normally be a Rumble type event in the game, then this will vibrate. So that was pretty cool, you know, that they, they started to use these things. And there were a few other games. I think there were um, like older GBA games that did a similar thing where you know they would have rumble things I think there was a Kirby game that had a tilt sensor in it and so as you tilted the Game Boy side to side it would steer it would roll Kirby around his little pink ball 
Um, the only problem with that is that because the GBA port is in the bottom of this, that the game would all be upside down. And so you can see the boss is sending us off. And this was from the kind of the rhythm game heyday of the mid 2000s, you know, when like Guitar Hero and Dance Dance Revolution and all these things were happening. We've got to get this, uh... oh, I missed it. <laughs> oh, I haven't played this in a while, so I think my time is a bit off. There we go. Yeah, and so then as I'm hitting that, the unit is kind of vibrating in time with that. So I, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, that they started to make these special add-ons and things. And then that brings us to what I think is kind of the king of uh, DS add-ons, which is the Guitar Hero game. And so you would get your, your game cartridge, which was pretty regular. But then <clears throat> instead of just having like a vibration pack or something, you actually got a full controller with four buttons. And so the idea is that you hit these buttons. And again, this plugs in via your, your GBA port there. And so you can just, you know, plug this in. And it also had this uh, nice little thing, which is a, I can't get that there. It's a stylus in the shape of a guitar pick. <laughs> and so you've got to tap the screen in time with the music and you're actually tapping it with this little guitar pick thing. So let's see how many tries I need to get this game to start up. Go second try. <clears throat> yeah, so you, um, it's all a bit weird. Oh, so you're just, just trying to, unfortunately, trying to put that on has dislodged the plug, so I've got to turn it on and off again. Yeah, so this, this um, there are some hardware issues I find with this, this thing, but, you know, it's, it's just, it's weird enough that I'll forgive it. Now, can we somehow get the screen? Crouch down here. Oh, it says we've disconnected again. It's been more reliable <laughs> than this in the past, so. Okay. Yeah, it's got a little warning there about hurting your wrist, which is actually needed because it's it's not very good for your hands as I'll mention in a minute here so if you've ever played Guitar Hero you kind of know what you're in for here okay it's got a built-in camera is it sorry no no that's no, my reflection, reflection. <laughs> that's just the reflection of me on the Fritting with one hand and strumming with the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a really cool idea because I did like Guitar Hero you know, when I was uh, kind of, you know, playing it when it originally came out. And I thought, you know, wouldn't a portable Guitar Hero be great? The only thing is that. Um, I think the controller was really made for kids because I'm not a big guy, but even so, I find it quite hard to get my, my fingers on all four buttons. I've got to kind of cramp my little finger around there, you know, and um, even after just one song, you sort of get carpal tunnel, you know, just trying to hit this. And so, you know, I was like complaining about this to my wife and she said, well, you know, it's a DS game. I mean, how big can you make it, you know? Mm -hmm. And... I guess, like, she was saying that rhetorically, but I took that as a challenge, you know? It's like, yeah, how big could you make it, you know? Like, well, you could make it, like, this big, right? Because the, um, <laughs> the game comes with an adapter. If you've got the original model DS rather than the Lite, 
then this isn't going to fit properly. And so you have to use an adapter to get it into the original DS. So this plugs into your GBA port. And then the other side, there's literally just five pins, you know, and I thought, well, there's four buttons and five pins. So it doesn't take a genius to work out it's, you know, common plus four others. And so I, I tried plugging this in and then just bridging with a wire, like the, you know, one pin to the others. And I worked out pretty quickly, okay, that's how it works. And so, well, yeah, why can't you just have, you know, four little, little <laughs> buttons? And so, um, <clears throat> let's see how we go. Yeah, so in this case, I can um, position these switches a bit further apart so that I can get them with my fingers there. Uh, what I am doing right now is I'm looking for uh, a proper Guitar Hero controller, like one of the original ones, you know, because I figure then I can um, cut the neck off it and just have the end with the buttons and then wire that onto this. So it's sort of at an experimental phase right now. I, I built this uh, literally two days ago. Yeah, so I can't really rock too hard because the DS is going to fall off. I need to make some kind of... Uh, Oh, it is actually working though. That's crazy. I wasn't sure if it would. <clears throat> yeah, and so that's what I think is, um, you know, kind of cool about the DS is that it's at this point now where it's really, really cheap. And there's a lot of, you know, interesting stuff out there. And I, I think that maybe people haven't quite cottoned on to how good it is. You know, so I think that... Um, you know, if you see any DS stuff out there, it's probably now is a good time to get into it. You know, like even this, I think is pretty cool, but this was like $36. So, you know, like it's still very affordable to get any of the, the DS kind of things. So yeah, that's, uh, you know, my, my DS collection and my probably the, the ugliest game controller ever made. But uh, yeah, like it, it does work. And I thought that was, you know, just an interesting thing to, to try out. So, yeah, that's me. Thanks. Very good. And I think I've seen DS's in CEX.